Welcome to Talk to Brazil with Tom Riach, the business connector to business in Brazil. Welcome to Talk to Brazil, the business connection, the world's first English language internet radio program about business in Brazil, and now in podcast format. I'm Tom Riach, an American in Brazil for many years and known as the king of networking, a speaker and author on networking. A professional business network is made up of people we meet every day. Our network grows and is sustained by maintaining contact with those connections. Podcasting is a modern form of networking. I'm talking from the city of Campinas, the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. So when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Today's guest is Claudio Bettini, and he's a Brazilian talking with us from Sydney, Australia. Claudio Bettini is a civil engineer, has an MBA in finance, postgraduate in project management, a master's in civil engineering, and Claudio also started a LinkedIn networking group called Brazilian Builders and Developers in Sydney. And now we're going to talk about networking in Australia. So hello, Claudio, and welcome to Talk to Brazil. Hello, Tom. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for being able to talk to your audience. Uh, as I mentioned, you're a Brazilian in Sydney, and uh, you sent me some pre-reading, and I've seen that you have been there for uh, almost two years. Uh, what made you start a networking group on LinkedIn? Um, when I came from, from Brazil to Sydney, I didn't know much people here. Actually, I knew only two families, and none of them um, had any connection in terms of, of my working uh, experience or my wife's. And we, I had to start like um, building a network, knowing people, to start finding a job and connecting to people that in construction property industry. So my first um, aim was start meeting people as I didn't know anyone. And how did that happen? You opened up the door, walked out and started saying, hello, Australia, I'm here. Uh, the first thing I did, I went on LinkedIn and I started browsing people that I thought that had similar um, experiences, similar profiles, working in the construction industry, mainly architects and civil engineers. I started connecting with these people, and then I decided to open a group, started inviting them, and little by little, people started joining the group to the point that I said, well, this we can start a, a, a meeting here. So I set a first meeting, 20 people attended, And I saw that we had something going on. So that was the start. Well, uh, again, just for our audience, you started the, the group on LinkedIn uh, this January 2019. Is that correct? Yes. So the group started on January when I started getting people into the group. And around February, we had a first meeting. And the group kept going and kept growing. Uh, around Gen uh, June, we had a second meeting. Then not with 20, but now with 50. And we started, keep, actually, we kept adding people to the group to the point that we got um, 200 now. So we had the last meeting two, two, three weeks ago, and we had a good attendance, something like 60 people. Now we're going to have the next one in December. And that's actually, for our, for our audience, that's the way I found you. Uh, because one of my connections, one of my contacts is Flavia de Souza, and she and I have been connected on LinkedIn since 2016. And I actually saw a post that she made about that meeting that you said uh, and a picture that you show of about 50 to 60 people at the meeting. And it was through that post on my timeline that I found you, because you and I were never connected. Yeah, uh, Flavia is a, you see, Flavia is a lawyer. And when I started building the group, I started um, looking for architects and civil engineers, but we started getting other people around. So Flavia was one of these people that uh, joined the group besides not being directly connected to construction industry. She's a lawyer. She works as a construction lawyer. And like Flavia, we have like many other people that today join the group 
not being directly um, working in the like builders or developers. Right. Yeah, I saw on, on, like, on LinkedIn that your objectives of the group are to build relationships, uh, connect Brazilians living in Sydney and working or willing to work in the construction and property industries, enhance our possibilities of doing business, and finding better jobs. So your f- initial focus was on Brazilians living in Sydney. Yes. Have you, exactly. expan- have you expanded that to Australians? Uh, not yet, because um, what we've been doing is meeting. So if you start getting people, we have some people like from Melbourne and another guy from Brisbane, but it's, if you, I could get to that point one day, but for now getting people around and meeting, you have to get people's in the people in the city. So, um, we will get that point, but not, not yet. So how do you feel with the group now after, uh, going on what, 10 months now? starting how do the members feel being they, part of such a group they look um everyone that that i invite the first thing that they say on linkedin before they even go to a meeting is um uh, thank you for doing this thank you for this initiative i've been living in sydney for four five eight sometimes ten years and i haven't really connected to to brazilians that work in my industry and Seeing you doing this and creating this opportunity is something um, really special. And after people go to the meeting and they start like creating relationships, because that's actually what networking is about. Right. And they start meeting people, interacting with others and um, finding jobs. So I think people are getting like very, very um, happy and with a lot of enthusiasm going on. Um, it, it's, it's truly networking going on, people finding jobs and um, we are meeting those objectives that I that you mentioned. But you mentioned uh, before we started the podcast uh, that networking and maintaining a group is work. It takes energy. Uh, how much yeah, energy do does. you dedicate to that? Uh, look, every day I, I separate some some time to to respond to messages because when you start building this group. You start getting people coming back to you and asking questions, asking for some advice in terms of career. I work as a project, besides being civil engineer, I work as a project manager here. And many people come back to me and say, how can I start in this career? Things like that. So one thing, it takes me at least half an hour a day just answering some messages. Uh, Mornings, I take my Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays to have coffee with different people from the group. So I met most of these uh, members of the group already. And when it comes like close to those meetings, then it takes me a bit more time. Like I have to, you have to see the place, you have to visit the place, right. you have to start getting in contact with people and seeing who is really going. So it, it takes, it's like a baby. You have to raise that baby. So um, especially in this beginning where it didn't get a momentum yet, it, it really takes a lot of time. Well, I, you just mentioned something that I defend, and I say that in Brazil, uh, business starts with coffee. Uh, and uh, what you just mentioned is that sitting down, and Brazilians also uh, value face-to-face contact. Uh, the virtual do. Virtual connections, my personal feeling, are are more difficult to start and maintain. Uh, but if you are able to sit down and have the face-to-face meeting over coffee or whatever, uh, that does seem to be the way Brazilians like to do it. Do you agree with me? Yes, I agree. I think that um, even Australians, look, when you, when you go for a coffee, when you sit with someone face-to-face and you're um, having a breakfast or just drinking a coffee, uh, this informality um, eases the, the process of knowing someone, of getting someone to be more open to tell you really the, what their needs are. So uh, I think it's the best thing, honestly. Um, you just sit there for one hour. You have a good chat. You'll ask about the person's story. Um, it's not just about um, going into the, the business, into the 
job side of their their what they're asking. It's about knowing who they really are. So that's how the, you're going to help them. So you don't you don't sit down so, and make a pitch. You really uh, that's really a Brazilian way. You want to sit down and know the person. I I never make a pitch. Actually, um, I go asking questions. Um, I go from what I call a, a very superficial level to a deeper level. So depending on who you have sitting with you, um, the person might be shy. So you have to get this kind of thing. So how do you, how do you talk to someone you never saw before? So you start from, from an, a very superficial level. How's your day going? Busy day. How's your agenda for today? Things like that. And then you go like, what's your story? So it's one step further. And you go a bit further, a bit further. And you let the person talk and you just listen. And that's the best thing to, to really see where the person is. And then you start going back to everyone you know and everyone you know in the group. And then you build the connections. Then you get this person and say, look, I think it would be really good for you to connect with this person or with that person. Or you can present yourself as an assistant project manager for now. And I'm going to give you a contact, things like that. So right. that's how you help people. And as you start helping people and they start feeling this, this helping environment, they will be willing to help others as soon as they can. And I think that's the best outcome of a network when you have many people willing right. to help each other. Right. Well, I, I agree with everything you've just said, Claudio. And after, and as I mentioned, I, I'm an American in Brazil, and I've seen that. I live that. And, and that's really the Brazilian way. Uh, but the other side of that same coin, and what I hear from many foreigners, and I also give advice to foreigners coming to Brazil, uh, is they consider that, uh, I'm not saying they don't consider that as being good. They consider that as being a lengthy process uh, and sometimes difficult because many times a business person comes to Brazil, he may have three or four days uh, as an agenda to meet with people. And obviously, uh, most of the foreigners that I have met who come to Brazil are very objective in their approach. It's not that they don't uh -huh. want to meet Brazilians or they don't want to talk, uh, but they have a, an agenda. They have objectives. They have to come and sit down and mm -hmm. be in business. And many times uh, they feel that an hour or two hours dedicated just to, to start the relationship uh, may be more time than that they have. And so if they, they ask for a 30-minute meeting, they expect 30 minutes of meeting, but a business meeting. Do you, how do you find that? What are your suggestions on both sides of that same coin? What are your suggestions to foreigners when they meet Brazilians? And what are your suggestions to Brazilians when they meet foreigners? Well, let's start with the easier one. Brazilians <laughs> meeting foreigners. Yeah, it's much, much easier. Um, Australians in general, people that like Australia is a very mutual country. So you find people from everywhere here. Uh, as soon as you get here, if you come from Brazil, after some six months, your mind starts changing. Your mindset changes. So in Brazil, you're quite... Um, scared of things brazil maybe because of violence maybe because of a bit of corruption lots of cultural factors we are always stepping back you know right. a lot when it comes to business so brazilians are not that open on the other side australians are very open very open so um i can tell you that i did this network i have 200 people in this network brazilian network but i met some 400 people that are not Brazilians in Sydney already doing just the same thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't build a network. I just approached them on LinkedIn. I asked them to, to go for a coffee. Uh, let's say that every two persons that I approach and I ask for a coffee, one will say yes. So it's very, very easy to get someone in front of you to have a coffee and discuss something to present your company or to learn something about someone's co company here right. in Australia. People are very, very, very open. Um, it doesn't mean at all that they're going to be friends with you, but this first approach, this first interest they have, and they will accept an invite. As long as you have like a nice message that gets their attention, they will probably, if they have the time to meet you, they will meet you. Let's go now to the other side, Brazilians. Brazilians are more scared. So 
if I if I had to to build a network in Brazil, um, I wouldn't get 200 people in let's say eight months as I did, because for many factors, I think it's a it's I think it's a mindset thing. So um, Brazilians are more closed for 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 doing business. They're very more open for being friends. So you can meet someone in Brazil and you can become friends in in a night or in a football game or something like that. It's very oh, over easy. over coffee, but right? <laughs> over a coffee. But if you get to the same person that you just met and you say, okay, um, what about your business? The person will, will will give a step back. So it's like, oh, what is it? what he wants? You know, it's like there's some kind of it looks like. When you say business, there's like a, an agenda behind it. So, and it's it's like you said, um, foreigners they they yes they have this agenda. It's business. Thirty minutes, let's go for it, and they expect to have it discussed openly in thirty minutes. And Brazilians, you will need more than thirty minutes before you can start talking business. So I remember when I was back in Brazil and you had any kind of business meeting. You need time. You have to start. You have to talk about the football and how is Flamengo, how is Fluminense. And you need a lot of introduction before you can start talking business. Otherwise, it looks like it's rude. You're just jumping, you know, to the, to the, to the business talk and to the bottom line. No introduction. Yeah. 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 So um, what I would say, if you're a foreigner, you want to make business with Brazilians, um, you have to study your client very well. You have to know exactly what he needs, and you have to come to him with something that he really needs. If you try to sell something, sell an idea that he doesn't already recognize, realize that he needs, he'll be like, you know, back in the chair, like, what is this guy trying to sell me? He's right. going to get trying to get money out of me. Right. So, and I think that's the point. You, that's you the just only made. thing I can say now. Everybody wants my money, right? They don't want my friendship. Exactly. Yeah. So, look, um, it's much easier doing business here. Honestly, it's <laughs> yeah, it is. As long as you as long as you have a good product, you're going to make business. In Brazil, you, you have to make friends first. So, I was right. talking about this with a friend here. Like, if you want to start a business here, you have competitors. If you have a good product, if you're better than the other guy, you're going to sell your product. In Brazil, you might have the best product, but you're not, if you're not friends with people in the market that will be buying it, you're going to have a hard time. It's not just about the product. You have to be part of that specific network. Otherwise, so, it, otherwise it doesn't go forward. It doesn't go forward. It, it might go. It can go, but it will be quite hard. It's not going to be easy. And we'll Here take it's, more it's, time. It's, and, and back to taking more time, uh, we get to a point that uh, – is also a business challenge when we talk about cost uh, because time is part of cost. And, mm -hmm. and what I see when foreigners come to Brazil, uh, there is something called custo Brasil, now the cost of Brazil, uh, which many times for foreigners, that's hard to understand of what that really means. And costs in Brazil are different than cost other places in the world. Uh, and they need yes. to be understood. So, uh, well, you see that. I think you see the reverse side of that being in Australia. Uh, you just mentioned it's easier to start a business there uh, for many reasons, right? And I mean, I'm imagining that the cost of doing business in Australia is a lot lower than the cost of doing business in Brazil. Yes, for sure. Um, when I was in Brazil, I, I, I thought many times about opening a business and – when you start thinking about all this custo Brasil, you think again. You know, you you have a second thought, a third thought, a tenth thought. So <laughs> you just um, you never stop yeah, thinking about it, right? That's true. You just never stop thinking to the point you don't open. So people that open businesses, they just you know they just open it. You don't think much about it. So what what is really different? First thing, taxes is something that Brazil is just astonishing. Um, you have you have taxes and costs with um, to have an employee, so it's it's very hard to 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 keep a business open and profiting. Um, another thing is just we, what we mentioned about time. Times in Brazil are you take time to do things, even a meeting. Right. You go for a meeting here, 
meetings will take 30 minutes. So I'm a project manager. I go so with here, my here in Australia, meeting. In Australia, it's 30 minutes, right? That's it. Here in Australia, it's 30 minutes. So yeah. I have a project meeting. It's a big project. And you have 12 guys around the table. I run the meeting in 30 minutes. So uh, one, one uh, month ago, I bought a book that is the 25-minute meeting. Mm. And I started reading just to see how close I was to that. Because I was running meetings at that point, 40 minutes, let's say. And I now am down to 30. Look, in Brazil, I wouldn't get those meetings in less than an hour and a half. Right. So it's part of this Brazilian cost. So some people refer to this Brazilian cost as corruption. But it's, it's not corruption. And at the end, it's a mindset. The way of doing business, so, right? That's it. It's the way of doing things. Right. So corruption is just one aspect. It's not... Well, uh, as I mentioned before we started uh, uh, this podcast, uh, Claudio, what I what I want to do is have you back on, and we want to do another podcast more on a technical side. We've talked today about networking, how do you meet people, how you're starting your business and success in Australia. Uh, but I'd like to have you back on, since you do have 20 years of experience in Brazil in construction, uh, I'd like to get back to this topic of costs in Brazil, custo Brasil, so that you can help our foreign listeners understand a little bit more of what this actually is, or some points they need to be uh, have up front when they do come to Brazil, some very good questions to ask even before they come. So can we do that? Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Well, for today's podcast, Claudio, I want, I want to say that uh, we're coming to the end of our time. I want to thank you for being part. I want to congratulate you, first of all, uh, for developing this group, the Brazilians, Builders and Developers in Sydney, and your success with over 200 members and being able to, to get so many people together and your process and approach to doing that. Uh, I do understand that it does take work, does take times, as you mentioned, uh, but you see it is successful, it can be, and that's really the way I met you. So thanks again for being part of our podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure, great honor. And Looking I'd forward like for the to, next one. Okay, and I'd also like to thank uh, our listeners and invite everyone to visit our site, which is wwwtalk to Brazil. That's T-A-L-K, the number two, B-R-A-Z-I-L dot com. Well, you'll find today's interview with Claudio Bettini, and Bettini is B-E-T-T-I-N-E, Claudio, C-L-A-U-D-I-O, so Claudio Bettini. More information about his group on his LinkedIn profile. you also find this in our previous shows of Talk to Brazil on Spotify, Apple Podcast, TuneIn, Himalaya, CastBox, Google Podcast, and many others. And thank you our audience, and remind everyone that today's program was brought to us by Focus MI Market Intelligence, and Focus MI specializes in market research for the Brazilian agricultural market. More about them on their site, focusmi.com, which is F-O-C-U-S-M-I.com. Goodbye, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Tom Riach on Talk to Brazil, the business connector to Brazil.